Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Berryville, Clark County edition. I'm back on the Zooms today with Nathan Stalvey. Nathan is the director at the Clark County Historical Association. Lots to talk about as always with Nathan. Art at the Mill is just around the corner. But before we jump in and welcome Nathan back to the show, I want to give a quick shout out to Power Concepts. Many of you may have seen my Facebook post singing their praises. They were fantastic. We had a issue with Debbie when she came rolling through several weeks ago, and she decided not only to flood major parts of the country, but also our electric panel box. And it was dripping during Debbie's trip through the Shenandoah Valley. So Power Concepts came out. They were here on time. They got everything replaced. Brand spanking new panel box. The guy, Jacob, that was here, fantastic. So highly, highly recommend. And I want to give them a quick shout out and a thank you because not having power is bad. But knowing that water is rolling through your electric panel box, much, much worse. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Nathan, how ready are you for Art at the Mail? Oh, we're getting there. We are (laughs) certainly getting there. It is a massive undertaking. It really does take a lot. It takes an entire village to put this together. This art show, we had 336 different artists submit works into the art show. Wow. The jurying process was very, very stringent because we had so many works this time around. And we can only, again, we can only accept between 900 and 1,000 given space and the guarantee to our artists that everything will be seen and on display by the final week of the art show. So if we accept it any more, then there's the risk that some would not get out of reserve to be seen. So there were a lot of tough decisions that had to be made, but the artwork, again, is exceptional as always. We're very happy with what we see there, and we can't wait to open it up. At some point, you're going to have to think about building a little shed just to have (laughs) overflow art to be able to accept more, because that's a lot of art. And it's it hurts my heart that artists aren't able to get their stuff in because you just don't have the space. It's a good problem. I mean, I hate to say it's a good problem, but I'd rather have... (laughs) too much and too little that we don't have enough art to fill the space but we're very fortunate part of the mill is something that's been going on for 30 plus years our team our volunteers have done an absolutely exceptional job at keeping this streamlined keeping us organized uh making sure that everything runs very smoothly getting the word out doing the marketing reaching more artists each show we get more and more and more we we had 240 artists that submitted in spring of 21 and each show it has just grown and grown and grown and now we're at 336 it's incredible and it's very humbling to know that so many artists want to be a part of this very special art show we thank them for all their work and they a lot of these artists spend their time volunteering for the art show so if you go and visit art at the mill during the two weeks that it's up you see a lot of the volunteers there most of those volunteers are artists that have works in the show. So you'll get a chance to meet some of the artists. And there's also a day during the show called Artist Reception, which is open to the public, where many of the artists come in and they have a chance to meet the artists. The public has a chance to meet the artists. Artists get to meet each other, learn from each other, and it's a chance to meet your favorite artist in person. One of my favorite things about this show every year is even though you have such a large number of artists, a lot of them, I don't know that it's the majority, but a lot of them are local, but all of them are East Coast or regional in a lot of cases. So I get to come to the artist reception or come to the show at any point and see something that maybe a neighbor painted or an artist that I'm already familiar with locally painted. But I also get to see something that maybe somebody in Vermont painted and fall in love with it just as easily. Yeah, it's a great way to discover new artists. And it's also a great way to see works from artists that you knew, like new work from artists that you already know. It it really is a nice blend of both. So when does the show open and when does it close? So it opens on Saturday, September 21st, my birthday, actually. And it closes on Sunday, October 6th. And my runs birthday, every day. Actually. So, your birthday. Hey, look at that. <laughs> you so worked that opens out on perfectly. mine, ends on yours. Look at that. How about that? <laughs> and what days, what times is it open? Sundays through Fridays, it is open 12 to 5 and Saturdays from 10 to 5. And if I am there any time during that period and I find a piece that I can't live without, it comes right off the wall and goes home with me that day. I don't have to wait until the show is over to come back and pick it up, right? Correct. You buy it. You take it home that day. We wrap it up for you. You can take it home that day. It's yours to take once you buy it. 
And that's where the volunteers, again, come in really handy because now they have a space they have to fill, which doesn't always mean finding something of the same size because there is a method to how all of that art is hung. And they may have to rearrange a whole wall or a whole corner of a wall to fill that hole so that it still looks good for everybody else coming in. Exactly. It is a method. It's not simply so if a piece comes off the wall and is bought, you can't just simply replace that piece with another work of the same artist. It could be a very different style, very different colors. You don't want art that look very similar or have similar colors hanging beside each other. You want every piece to stand out. It could be bigger. It could be smaller. It takes a lot of rearranging. There is an art to art, the hanging art. <laughs> And then once the show opens on September 21st, and I have done this ever since you told me that it was available, I go online and I look at everything that you have, because like you mentioned earlier, there are pieces that are in reserve. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So there may be something upstairs that isn't hanging yet that I love. I can still buy it and come pick it up at the mail. That's correct. So once the show opens on September 21st, the online gallery goes live. And at that point, people can click the link, view all the works, whether it's in reserve or out on the floor, they get to see all the works. If they see something they like, they can call us up during the hours that we're open, say, I want to buy this. We take their payment over the phone, grab the piece down, wrap it up and have it set to the side for whenever they want to come and get it. So yeah, all the works are available online beginning September 21st, the day the show opens. And I want to make sure people understand and realize, and we talk about this whenever we talk about art at the mill, but this isn't just paintings hanging on the wall. It, there are a ton of paintings, watercolors, oils, all sorts of things, but it is a lot of different types of art that you showcase during this event. Yes. So we have a lot, as you mentioned, we do have a lot of oil, a lot of painting, a lot of acrylic. We have watercolor, pastels. We also have sketches, we have even three-dimensional art. We have sculptures, we have pottery, we have wood turning, we have glass. It's a little bit for everything. The atmosphere of the mill just adds to all of the ambiance while you're there. Yeah, it really does. We're very fortunate. Our mill creates a one-of-a-kind gallery. You're not going to see an art gallery quite like this. Do I have to pay an admission fee to come any of the days that you're open? Yes. So it's $5 adults, $3 seniors, students are free. However, if you have a postcard and you bring the postcard in, you get in for free. If you're not on our mailing list, then you bring the postcard in. We add you to our mailing list to make sure you get that postcard for future shows. And yeah, you get in free with the postcard. Or we also have some advertisements that are out there in a number of different publications. If you bring in that advertisement, you also get in free. I got my postcard. I was showing it to you before we started recording, and I was telling you how amazing I thought the piece of artwork was that you featured on that. And you were telling me that if I think it looks good on this postcard, wait till I come see it in person. Truly. Like a lot of times we've had the feature pieces that the images that we have of it are really, really great. They resemble the image very well. This one, I when I saw it hanging up in the show, I was stunned at how vivid it is. Like I said, the photo is great. But seeing it in person, I can't even begin to describe how incredible it is. I, I'm very happy when people come in and see it. Trust me, when you walk in, you will see it. You cannot miss it. And this piece in particular that's featured on the postcard is 22 by 28. But much like the diversity that you have of the types of art, so are the sizes. I can get a piece of tiny art. I can get something that takes up an entire wall. There are a lot of variety in sizes of the art that you feature as well. Oh, yeah. So there's, like I said, there really is something for everyone, size-wise, price-wise, style-wise. Yeah, we've got some larger pieces, we've got some smaller pieces, and everything in between. How long ago did you start adding the QR codes under each piece that gives me the opportunity to scan and learn more about that particular artist? Because that's another one of my favorite things, is being able to discover more works than what I may just see hanging in front of me. This was something we started doing, I believe we started doing this right after COVID. I believe it was the show after COVID when we started doing it. It was a way if we could streamline stuff. We used to have books with artist bios, and we still do, but the QR codes allow it to be better because when artists enter their works in, one of the things they have to upload is their bio. So this way, instead of people going flipping through the books and trying to find the bios and the artists, because some artists didn't provide them, now they can go to the labels by each work, scan the QR code, boom, goes right to the bio. You can learn everything about the artist right there, of every artist. 
And that I think that makes it a lot easier because then we've had in the past where people say, oh, I saw this artist in the show, but I can't find their bio in the bio. But now all the bios are there. They're just right there on the wall where you can scan that code and it saves some trees. We don't have to print out as much. <laughs> and it gives me the ability to then save it on my phone so that if later right. I want to find that artist to purchase another piece for my home or as a gift for somebody, I have it now in my little database that I carry around with me everywhere I go. Exactly. Little things like that, that we've really kind of streamlined to make things a lot more efficient. It's a lot easier for artists to submit their works. It's a lot easier for them to put their bios up there. It's a lot easier for us to create labels. We've just done a lot over the years to really make this more efficient. So before we go to break, tell me where is Art at the Mill being held? It is held at the Burrow Morgan Mill. It's at 15 Tannery Lane in Millwood, Virginia. If you know where Lock Store is, we're right across from Lock Store. And we're right off of Route 50 in the southern end of Clark County. What days and times is the Art at the Mill open? We are open Sundays through Fridays from 12 to 5 and Saturdays from 10 to 5. The show opens and closes when? The show opens September 21st, and it runs every day through October 6th. What day is the artist reception? The artist reception will be the afternoon of September 29th. I think it's one o'clock is when it is. And there are also sometimes artists that are just there. You mentioned that sometimes they volunteer, but sometimes they just come out and wander around and you could bump into somebody as you're admiring their work. No, oh, that's very true. Even if the artists aren't there volunteering, you'll see them come in from time to time because they want to bring their friends in and potential buyers in as well to show them their art. So yeah, you have a good chance of running into an artist when you come to the art show on any given day. So it's $5 admission fee, which is such a small price to pay, especially knowing that it goes back to support all of the things that you do with the CCHA. Mm -hmm. But if I have a postcard or see one of the ads, I can bring it in and get free admission into the show. That's correct. Where can I go online to get more information? To go online, you go to clarkhistory.org and you click at the Art at the Mill tab and everything you want to find is right there on that page. Links to the online gallery when it's up and running, information about the show, times, dates, everything is right there on that page. Let's take a break. When we come back, can you give me an update on the Mill Dam project? I know when you were here last, we talked about the funding that you got from the state. Can I get an update on that in the next segment? Absolutely. We are on the Zoom today with Nathan Stalvey. He is the director at the Clark County Historical Association. It is Tourism Tuesday, Berryville, Clark County edition. We're going to come back and talk more with him in just a couple of minutes. Hey guys, I'm Holly. And I'm Bonnie. And we would love to meet you at our brewery, Winchester Brew Works. That's right. Our family-friendly tasting room in Old Town is the perfect place to hang out any day because we're open seven days a week. We've got refreshing beers, seltzers, and slushies, plus food trucks and events on the weekends. And the best part is we are so excited to be part of this brand new passport program where you just need four stamps from Winchester area breweries and cideries to get some great free swag. So pop on by our brewery and we'll get you a passport. You can find out more at winchesterbrewtrail.com. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Berryville, Clark County edition. Nathan Stalvey is on the Zooms with me. He is the director at the Clark County Historical Association. We talked in the first segment about Art at the Mill. The fall show opens September 21st. Nathan's birthday runs through October 6th. My birthday, that was planned. I know it was, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems that way, yes. It is held at the Burwell Morgan Mill. $5 gets you in to see all of it, but if you have a postcard or see one of their ads, you can do it. It is open every day of the week, varying times. Nathan, give us a quick rundown on that before we wrap up. But Nathan, you've got a really cool talk that's coming up that your archivist is doing about the reconstruction of Clark County. Yes, I'm very happy about this. So every year we do a publication called Proceedings, and each volume represents an aspect of Clark County's history. We've transcribed oral histories, we've transcribed diaries, we've had outside historians do some short articles inside it. It's been a lot of different, a lot of different subjects. This past one was completely written and researched by our archivist Melanie Garvey using resources here at the Clark County Historical Association, 
consulting a lot of the items that we have in our archives here. Over the past year, she did a lot of research on this. She gathered some information and honestly, Clark County's never had a publication that is focused exclusively on this time period. So this publication really looks at what life was like in Clark County after the Civil War. This is a time period that was not very pleasant for a lot of people, whether you were formally enslaved, whether you were a property owner, it was not a good time. And she examines a lot of data, looks at a lot of letters, a lot of diaries, looks at a lot of items that were written in the newspapers at the time. It really does give you this really good perspective on what was going on in the county at this time. And she will be talking about this research, what she's uncovered, a lot of things that people probably haven't learned yet about Clark County, she's going to be talking about this weekend. The cool thing about having talks like this is that you really do get to hear life stories. When you're talking about how she's read letters and she's looked at diaries, you really do get a sense of the people and what they were going through. And it's not just this building was burned down and this is when they rebuilt it and that sort of stuff. It really does give you that perspective and insight that you talk about. Absolutely. And one of the beautiful things about Melanie's research, whether it's with reconstruction in Clark County or anything else that she's given a talk on or research on, she really gives you that viewpoint from the time period. She's really good about not putting on 21st century eyeglasses to a 19th century ideal. So she's researching and writing about it to give you that 19th century perspective. And sometimes it, it can be a little difficult for people to swallow because like, oh, wow, that did people really think that? Yes, yes, they did. You can't think like somebody from the 21st century in the 19th century. You're going to get lost real fast. So she's really good about those personal stories, but also mixing that with the data. Numbers don't lie. Right. So combining the two of those and what she's produced has been this exceptional publication. And there will be copies of it for sale at the talk as well. The talk is this Sunday. Where is it and what time? So the talk is at the Barnes of Rose Hill in Clark County, right in downtown Berryville. And the time will be two o'clock. Do I need a ticket or an admission fee, registration, anything like that? Yes. So you can go online to our website. It is $15 for Clark County Historical Association members and Barnes Rose Hill members and $20 for non-members. So let's talk for a second about the mill dam because you got that I'll say pot of money, but that's not really what it was. You had to work very, very hard to get that funding for yes. the mill dam. Where are you in that process? You know, now that the money was put in the budget, we were able to get out there and get some bids on the project. We've selected a company that's going to begin work here. They're going to begin work mid-October. We talked with the Corps of Engineers about anything that we had to go through with them. We talked with the Powhatan School because we're going to have to access part of their property to get to the mill dam to construct this work. And we're going to be creating a path through their property, newly acquired property, that we're going to help them turn into a nature trail, put up interpretive signage out there so that it can also be a learning experience for their students, not just simply a path for us to do construction, but a path that can be an educational tool for them going forward. And we will cover the cost of getting those interpretive panels done, as well as creating the path down to the mill dam. We're looking at beginning the work in mid-October, and it should take about six weeks to complete. So the weather and timing have to go right spot on. <laughs> it does. You certainly don't want to begin doing this work when there's heavy rain. And trust me, I've seen Spout Run Creek run really dry, and I've seen Spout Run Creek look like a miniature version of Niagara Falls. <laughs> So you definitely don't, you you want the former rather than the latter. You don't want to be doing that work when all four of the spillways have water just gushing over the sides. Let's talk for a second, too, about the scope of the project. I know we've referenced it in the past when we've talked about it, but for someone who maybe didn't hear those conversations, this isn't as simple as bringing in a concrete truck and reinforcing the dam. You have to do certain no. things in a certain way because of the historic nature of it. That's correct. And given the location, there's a lot of things we, we have to do. First, we have to create a coffer dam to fix the section of the dam that's leaking. That's very important because you got to get in there with the water around you and you have to do some work on that whole side without water around you. And some of that water can be up to five and a half feet deep. So you have to create a coffer dam to get that work done. Then we also have to replace the top timbers on each section of the mill dam. Because over time, those have withered away and you can't just 
pour concrete on top of that. You have to find something that's more stable. So replacing those timbers. And then the other big part of it is we have to repoint the stone buttresses that keep the dam up. Those have started to crack and show some damage. So we have to actually get all of those repointed so that it maintains the structural integrity of the dam. So exactly. this is not a light project. No, no, by any stretch. And having these repairs done is incredibly beneficial to the mill because if that dam were to give way, you've got a bigger problem on your hands. A much bigger problem. So first of all, the mill can't operate. That dam, any section of that dam gives way, the mill no longer operates. Then we're looking at like a million dollar plus repair at that point because you're having to readjust an entire creek. But I guarantee you that would be a lot more permits and a lot more work to get something like that done. Not to mention the fact that we're going to be flooding a lot of people along Spout Run, their properties along Spout Run Creek. Because if a section of that dam gives way, there's going to be flooding on an unbelievable level. So that's what this is going to address is to prevent any of that from happening. And this project is quite involved when you're talking about the Corps of Engineers and the partnerships with Powhatan School and all of those things. But it took quite a bit of work to get to this point. You had to work with local elected officials. There had to be presentations made to the state politicians. There was a lot involved in getting this funding approved. Oh, absolutely. And because the, of the unique nature of this and the substantial cost, I was really looking at every avenue. My first avenue was to look at the Virginia Dam Safety Project. They do have funds there to repair and fix dams through a grant program. However, the dams must meet a certain requirement as far as volume of water that it holds back. And although Spout Run Creek is a substantial volume of water, it's not close to the minimum requirements for the dam safety project, which are looking at entire reservoirs. So that precluded us from getting funds from that. We couldn't get any money from the infrastructure bill that was passed last year because that money went to the dam safety project. So that precluded <laughs> us from getting that. So I looked many different avenues. There were a lot of granting agencies says, hey, this is not something we really touch. A historic preservation grants, like we can help you do the study, but we can't help you do the construction. The cost for this project is basically greater than our annual operating budget. Right. I mean, this it, it is really not even is. a capital campaign type right. thing. You'd have yeah, to do a is... capital campaign for 10 years. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, we're looking at six figures here to get all of this done. And then also we have to start looking at the water wheel in the next few years because it's starting to warp and be out of balance. The cost of all of this work, including some archival supports to help Help strengthen up our archives, we're looking at costs that were far exceed our annual operating budget. And considering the fact that we do a lot of fundraising for our operations, for the art show, for the archives, for our Legacy Stone Capital Campaign Program, and how many times do we go back to our donors and say, hey, we actually need more money? So this is when I went to work with Delegate Dolores Oates, who introduced the budget amendment. I worked with her, told her what I was looking for. She understood that. She understood the need. And of course, you know, the questions I would get from a lot of politicians, have you looked at damn safety? Have you looked at grants? <laughs> I said, yes, yes, yes. Trust me, this is, I wouldn't be here if I couldn't find another way. And so they were very receptive. Everybody understood. It was it was a lot of work, a lot of meetings, a lot of pitches that I had to make, but it paid off in the end. And I was very thankful. Everybody that I met was very open. They understood that, especially when I'm coming to them, it's like, hey, this is a one-time ask. This is a generational fix. So once this is done, we're not going to have to worry about the mill dam for decades. I think that was also a selling point and also the safety issue. This gives way. It is a massive safety issue for the people along Spout Run Creek, keeping the mill open, ecological disasters. This was really a nonpartisan issue. Everybody on both sides of the aisle understood the importance of keeping this mill dam and keeping the mill operating. Will I be able to see any of this construction if I visit the mill or is it too far removed? It's too far removed. The dam is only accessible through private property. So this is like 1,900 feet upstream from the mill. You wouldn't be able to actually get to it. We actually have an easement to get there to that property. And also through Powhatan's property, we have to create a special path to get down there to do the work. But that's the only way to get down there and see it. You'd have to get permission from us. And we'd have to also talk to the property owners likewise to see any of that. 
Which is also a selling point because you don't want major construction happening within earshot or eyesight of the mill when people are visiting the mill for that particular experience. So that's right, kind of a bonus exactly. that it's a little further out. Yeah. And consider when you think it's a six weeks project and we're mid-October through mid-November, those six weeks are very, very busy for the mill. <laughs> we really don't want to have major construction going on down there. No, the dam is 1,900 feet away from the mill, so you wouldn't be able to hear it or see it. So before we wrap up, tell me again, Art at the Mill. Give me the details for where, when, all of that sort of stuff. Art at the Mill, as a reminder, will be at the Borough Morgan Mill in Millwood, Virginia. It's 15 Tannery Lane, located right off Route 50 in Southern Clark County. And it runs from September 21st through October 6th, Sundays through Fridays from 12 to 5 and Saturdays from 10 to 5. And they can get more information about all of this where? Go to our website, clarkhistory.org. You can find information on Art at the Mill. You can also go to our events page and find out about more of our events and order your tickets there for any of our events, including our upcoming talk on reconstruction in Clark County by our archivist, Melanie Garvey. So yeah, everything you can find is right there on our website. Can I just show up on Sunday and pay my $15, $20 at the door? Yes, you absolutely can. You can pay right there at the door. Fantastic. And I know you're coming back in October because you're doing some haunted tours that you're going to give us details about for that too, right? Yes. So whenever I'm back next month, you'll hear all the details about the haunted history tours in Berryville. Thank you for taking some time today. I do appreciate it. Absolutely. Always happy to be here. I will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of The Valley today, a few minutes after noon. So meet me here then.